Hey, my name is Jordan and I'm learning and growing as a video editor. About a year ago, I made a video called Five Things I Wish I Knew About Premiere Pro. And since then, there's been a couple people who've either said that it's been helpful or that they could relate in some way. But there's only five things on that list and there's way more things that I really wish I knew when I was starting out to learn Premiere. So one year later, I thought it'd be really fun to make another video, five more things I wish I knew starting out in Premiere Pro. Here we go, number one, nesting. So the first time that I needed to use nesting was when I had two different types of video files. One was a 4K file from a GH4 and the other one was a 1080p file from my Canon 5D. And I really wanted to use warp stabilizer on this 4K footage, but when I tried it, it gave me this this message. Just can't do it. Not allowed. Nuh-uh. Ain't gonna happen. So for me, there was two options. I would just leave my shaky footage as it was, or I went for the really convoluted option, make a project just of that 4K footage, export it as a 1080p file, then re-upload it back into my project and then apply the effect to it. I thought that I was really smart until a friend of mine told me that I could just nest the clip. And suddenly I went from feeling really smart to really, really stupid. Right click, hit nest, and you've made a sub sequence within your timeline. Now back out into your original timeline and you're able to make changes to the clip. Number two, warp stabilizer. I'm completely addicted to warp stabilizer. I honestly see it as like the duct tape of video editing. It's that good. Nine times out of 10, if you have anything less than perfectly smooth footage, throw in a warp stabilizer and boom, instant improvement. Is your handheld footage a little bit shaky? Warp stabilizer. Is your slider shot not quite perfect? Warp stabilizer. Is your relationship shaky because you forgot your girlfriend's birthday again? Warp freaking stabilizer. Just keep in mind with warp stabilizer, less is more. The default smoothness amount is like 50%. In my experience with most footage, you don't need more than one to 3%. Number three, auto save. If you've been editing in Premiere for anything longer than 30 minutes, you've seen an automatic save pop up before. Boop, boop, boom, boom, auto save. And you think, wow, that's a great feature. If I forget to save, all my work is covered up to that point. And you're totally right. But here's the thing, in Premiere, the default auto save frequency is about like 15 minutes. For me, when I started out, for some reason, it was at 30. Not a big deal, you say, right? I cannot tell you how many times I've done like 27 minutes of editing only to have my computer crash, go back in and see that, oh no, all that work is gone. And, and when you hear that, it doesn't sound like the most horrifying thing, but if it's happened to you, you know how devastating it is. Especially when you really, really like the changes you made. You lose all your energy, you lose all your momentum, and you have to go back and start doing things that you know probably won't turn out as well. And even if they do, you don't feel that way in the moment. Best way to prevent that is to change that autosave frequency to every five minutes. Number four, new sequence from clip. So when I first started in Premiere, I saw all these tutorials about how to set up your sequence. You go file, new sequence, and you got this big list of a bunch of different presets. So you look through, are you using a red camera? Nope, HDV, I don't know what that is. DVD C Pro HD? Maybe? DVC Pro 50, Xcam HD422, Digital SLR? And it was just so many options and I was always wondering like, am I making the right choice? If I don't make the perfect choice, is my video quality gonna drop a little bit? I don't know. And then a friend of mine showed me this option and I've never used anything else since. Just take a clip that you know you're gonna use, right click on it and go to new sequence from clip. Premiere will set up a new sequence for you just based on the specs of that clip. So you don't have to worry about like, did I shoot in 30 frames per second or 24 or blah. It'll recognize that and you don't have to worry about it. Number five, edit on a fast drive. So the premise behind this is just really simple. Where your footage is located and where you set your scratch disks will actually impact how fast you can edit on your timeline. Like how fast can your computer chug through this stuff as it's going along. So my computer here, I have like four different drives as an example. One, we have just like a regular USB 3 connected hard drive. I got a couple Western Digital Black spinning hard drives in here. I've got one SSD and one PCIe SSD. The speed that each of those can read and write information are dramatically different. So if your footage is all stored on this really slow drive with poor connections into your computer, of course there's gonna be some bottlenecks and while scrubbing through footage it's gonna be choppy and like it's gonna lag but if all your footage is stored on a really fast drive and all your cache data is stored there too, your computer accesses everything really, really quickly. This helps with just scrubbing through, it helps with rendering times, it helps with exporting footage. It just makes everything so much easier. So the solution to this is just make a project file and put everything into that and move it to your fastest drive. When you look at the time differences on things like rendering and exporting, it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but what it does do is it lets you edit really, really quickly. And the less time you have to spend waiting for staggering footage to catch up, the easier it is just to get into a rhythm and have a lot of fun with the process. So that's it. Those are five more things I wish I knew starting out learning Premiere Pro. Just like the last video, some of these things I'm really embarrassed to admit that I didn't know how to do them for the longest time, even up until just recently. But the whole goal of this is just to like spread knowledge around and learn and grow and get better. And over time, there'll be more and more things that I learned that I think, wow, why didn't I know that sooner? So this video is actually like a sequel to another one I made. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. That's where it all started. Now, if any of these things helped you or if you had a similar experience where you didn't know how to do something and then learn 
learned it and it totally changed the way you edit, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, then give it a like. If you didn't, then let me know. I'd actually really like to know what I can do better. I've got some ideas for some videos in the near future, so if you're at all interested, subscribe and uh, hope to see you then. Thank you.